Hello everyone, and welcome back to our introduction to object-oriented programming. Last episode, we went over the first of the four main principles, encapsulation. This video greatly builds upon the ideas that were introduced last episode, so be sure to check it out before watching this episode. A link to the playlist containing every episode in the series so far will be in the description. In today's episode, we are going to be discussing the next of the four main principles of object-oriented programming, that being abstraction. Abstraction refers to the idea of only showing essential details and hiding everything else. This idea is present in everyday life. When you drive your car, there are some things that you need to understand about it. You need to understand how the steering wheel steers the car, and how the gas and brake pedals work. You also need to know how much gas your car has, and that it needs gas to work. These are necessary details for you to be able to drive the car properly. However, the exact way that the car works internally isn't something that most people need to concern themselves with. How the gas reacts in the engine, and how that translates into the car moving forward, really isn't important while you are driving your car. All that matters is that you know that it will work this way. Whoever built the car had to worry about how exactly the car would work, so that you don't have to. This idea extends to object-oriented programming. The classes you create should act like your car. Users of your classes should not have to worry about the exact inner details of said classes. This idea is similar to that of encapsulation that we discussed last episode. In that episode, we mentioned how you should not have classes directly interact with the data stored within other classes. Rather, have them use the class's methods to access their data. This idea is especially important when you want to work on your program incrementally, where you focus on one class at a time and ensure that it works. This is a very useful approach, as it can be difficult for you to focus on the big picture while programming and splitting up your project into smaller chunks can make it much more manageable. Furthermore, programs nowadays are vast and complex to the point where multiple programmers tend to work on one project. In this case, it's best if the section that you are working on is able to function without knowledge of the inner workings of your colleague section. To achieve this, it's best to think of your program in terms of interface and implementation. The interface refers to the way that sections of code are able to communicate with one another. This is typically through methods that each class is able to access. The exact implementation of these methods, or how the methods are coded, should be hidden within the class and not accessible from the outside. Think of this like the car. The other classes are able to turn the wheel and push the gas, and they know what the outcome should be, without caring about how exactly the process works. Let's return to the chess example that we've been using throughout the series. Let's say that you are working on the knight class, and a fellow programmer is working on the king class. In order to effectively work together, you need to agree on an interface with which these pieces are able to communicate together. In this case, Say that you are working on making the knight unable to move if your king is in check. As the programmer of the knight class, you make the knight use the king's getter method that will let the knight know whether or not the king is in check. If it is, then you make it so the knight is not able to move unless it is able to put the king out of check. As you program the knight class, you should not be concerned with how the king is determining whether or not it is in check. The king's method that communicates with the knight is part of the interface, but how exactly it determines whether or not it is in check is part of the implementation. This manner of only allowing classes to interact through a predetermined interface prevents different pieces of the program from becoming completely coupled together. If the knight class has to look into the king class in order to make a determination, then it is reliant on the king class being set up in a certain way in order to function. If the king class were to be changed, reorganized, or have any of its data renamed, then the knight class would no longer work, and it would also have to be changed. Assuming the rest of the program was coupled together in this way, then many other classes would also have to be modified. Creating a set interface through which classes can interact with one another ensures that each individual piece can be changed without creating a ripple effect that causes the entire program to have to change in response. Overall, it's best to keep in mind abstraction when writing object-oriented code, 
as it allows the program to be worked on incrementally and prevents it from becoming entangled and complex. Determine specific points of contact that can act as the interface between classes and only worry about the implementation behind it when working on that section. That does it for abstraction. Next episode, we are going to be moving into the next of the four main principles of object-oriented programming, inheritance. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for many more videos like this. Thanks for watching.